how to influence your children. So I'm, I'm aware, as I've said earlier, that some of you here uh, are not yet married, or you may be married, but you don't have children yet. So uh, I'm hoping this lesson can help you as well uh, with the people that you're in charge of. If you're not married, if you're single and you're in charge of a D group or a ministry, or you're you're meeting someone in a, an IDG setting, then I'm hoping you know that the principles you will learn here would be relevant in that setting as well. Okay, so I'm hoping you can pick up at least a couple of things to help you in your role as a, either a parent or a D group leader or an, uh, a discipler, you know, someone in authority over someone else. Okay, so we have finished five sessions in this book, book eight. Uh, we are in the sixth, how to influence your children. Next week, we're going to talk about what to teach your children, part one, and then another session, what, what to teach your children, part two. So last week naman, we discussed what is the role of parents in the family, okay? So tonight, how to influence your children. Um, when, when you think about it, we can, as parents, you know, we can't really help but influence our children. Diba? Uh, we can be good role models, which is the ideal, you know, situation. Or, if we're not good role models, then we can be bad examples as well. <laughs> we can be bad examples. So the question really is, what kind of influence do you want to have on your children? Because you will influence them either way. What kind of influence do you want to have on them? Okay. Tonight, um, I'm gonna ask you, what is your greatest fear? So as a, fa as a parent or as someone who's exercising authority over someone else, whether a big group or an IDG or a disciple, what is your greatest fear? Can you um, and, what, and what is your greatest joy? Can you tell, turn to your neighbor and tell them what is your greatest fear as a parent? What is your greatest joy? Sina, go ahead. Turn to your neighbor. Tell them. What is your greatest fear? What is your greatest joy? Remember that, ha? Tandaan niyo yung sinasabi ng neighbor niyo, ha? Kasi fake niyo. Okay? Remember that. Okay. So, you know, all of us, you know, we don't, when we're parents or we're, we're exercising authority over someone else, we all aim to be successful, di ba? We all aim to be successful. Hindi naman tayo aim to fail eh. But we all aim to be successful. Kaya nga, pag nakakita tayo ng gantong kunyari sa, sa Facebook wall natin, nakakita tayo ng fighting successful parents do before the reference. Like kagad natin or i-click kagad natin to find out, you know, what it's all about. But, you know, what does the Bible say about successful parenting? What does the Bible say about successful parenting? Do you want to know? Yes. Are you interested? Yes. Okay. Um, before we go there, let's commit this time to the Lord. Father God, we thank you so much that you have brought us once again here uh, in CCF Center to learn from you, to learn from your word, Lord God. I pray, Father, that uh, whatever preparations I have, I offer it up to you. I pray that uh, you will be the one to over, override whatever preparations, so, Lord God. And talk to your people personally. Talk to your people who are here uh, in a very personal way and teach them through your Holy Spirit what you want them to learn as parents, as someone who has authority over someone else. We commit to you this time we pray that your name alone, you alone, will be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Amen. So, what does the Bible say about successful parenting? Before, before we, got, we go to that, let me ask you, how do you see, how do you view your children? For those of, of us here who have children, how do you view them? Ano tingin niyo sa kabila? Are they like uh, little angels who can never do any wrong? And our role in their lives is to prevent them from going bad. Or do you see them as depraved individuals who are predisposed to, to sin? Be honest, how do you see your children? A lot of people would say, you know, my children, my child is like an angel. Lagi tama yung ginagawa niya. Well, some people are have that Pollyanna attitude, you know, uh, they see everything rose-tinted glasses. So, ganun sila. Uh, but, what does the Bible really say about children? In Proverbs 22, verse 15, it says, Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, and the rod of discipline will remove it far from him. In Psalm 51, verse 5, it says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in, in sin my mother conceived me. And in John 3, verse 6, Jesus says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So it's clear, right? Uh, it's clear that you know our children, because of the sin of Adam, they would inherit this this nature that is predisposed to doing bad, predisposed to sin. They're not little angels. Now, what does it matter how you how you view them? It matters because if we see them as depraved or prone to sin, you will have a proactive approach in rearing them up. You will train them. You will pray for them incessantly. You will bring them up in discipline, guide them how to be good, instruct them towards righteousness. But if you see them as innocent angels, then you will have a reactive approach. Right? You're like parang police. Uh, Ini expect mo gagawin niya yung tama all of the time. Kung mapaso pa lang, pag may nagawa siya, mali. So you get surprised, you get disappointed, and sad when, they, when you see them sin. You think that your role is only to fix things when they are already broken. You see the difference? That is a very important distinction on how you see your children. Okay? The Bible says they are depraved individuals and therefore we have to train them to bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Ephesians 6, 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Okay? How do we do this? How do we do this? Are you familiar with the saying, the blind leading the blind? Familiar kayo doon? Right? Narinig na natin yun. It's an idiom or a metaphor. Uh, it's used to describe a situation where a person who knows nothing is getting advice and help from another person who knows nothing also. So the blind leading the blind. Jesus said in Matthew 15 verse 14, you know, they will fall into a pit together. The blind leading the blind. Okay. So how do we bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord? How do we as parents do that? How do we guide them into an intimate knowledge of God? Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 1 to 2. So let's read, it to, read this together. 1, 2, 3, go. These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live, 
by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Okay, so what's the first lesson we learn here, here uh, as, a, as a parent? Okay? <clears throat> We we tackled this last week, diba? Last week, pinag-aralan natin yung role of parents, right? So it's just a review, okay? It's just a review. The first lesson we learn here, we see here, is that we should fear the Lord, okay? We first, before our children, before our grandchildren, we first should fear the Lord. Let's continue, verses 3 to 5. 1, 2, 3. Hear Israel and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in the land flowing with milk and honey just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Okay, so what's the second thing? The two more things that we learn from, from this passage. We should first be careful to obey. We should obey His commands in verse 3, right? Obey His commands and then love the Lord. We should love the Lord. Okay? Let's continue. Deuteronomy 6, chapters, uh, chapter 6, verses 6 to 9. 1, 2, 3, go. And these words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your sons, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. What do we learn here? The fourth thing that we can learn here is we should keep His words in our hearts. Keep His words in our hearts. Treasure it in our hearts. Another thing, number five, teach His words to our children. You should, you should teach them these words, these commands, these decrees diligently to your sons. Okay? <clears throat> number six, we should talk about his words every moment. When you're sitting down, when you're walking, by the way, when you're lying down, when you're rising up, okay, each moment of your life talking about his words to whom? To your children, to your family. Okay? Number seven, remind yourself. You should remind yourself of his words. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand. Parang bracelet. Okay? Bracelet nakasulat doon yung word ng Panginoon. So re, for you to, re, to be reminded, you use your hands every day, di ba? Whenever you do something. So when you, whenever you do that, you see your bracelet or or uh, whatever it is that you use to bind the word there, then you get reminded of the word of the Lord. Okay? Remind yourself of His words. And then lastly, you shall write them on the doorpost. You shall mark your homes with his words. Okay? Mark your homes with his words. Um, when I go to your house, will I know that a Christian lives there? If I visit you, so sa bahay nyo, will I know that a Christian lives there? Are there markers there? Are there, is there something like a plaque or a trophy, no trophy? Like a plaque or something that would tell me, you know, a Christian lives here. Will it be like that when I visit your house? You know, uh, in, in our place, uh, we have this small wind chime. You know what the wind chime is, right? Uh, the, it, it makes noises when uh, the wind blows on it. And at the bottom, usually, there is uh, like a piece of wood, you know, to, to make the string taut. So what, what I did was, um, I asked my son Daniel, I, I told him, what's your favorite verse in the Bible? And he said, okay daddy, it's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Who knows that? Where is he? 
Very good. Oh, galeng. Okay. Wala akong price dito pero kung meron lang, bibigyan kita. But, he wrote that on a piece of paper. Tapos what I asked him, okay, lagyan mo ng ano, parang laminate, uh, balutin mo siya ng scotch tape. And then he punched a hole, and we attach it to the bottom of that wind chime. So you know what? Whenever he hears the wind chime, he's reminded of that verse. Okay. He's reminded of that verse. Okay. So the Lord is saying here in Deuteronomy chapter 6, treasure my word. Okay. Don't let it out of your sight. Remind yourself always of, of my word. Okay. So what can we learn from this passage about successful parenting? First, we start with ourselves. We should start with ourselves. We should be a good son or a good daughter of our Father who is in heaven. Okay? We can only teach our children what we already know. They would mostly learn what we are putting into practice in our own lives. Okay? We start with ourselves. Kung hindi tayo for example, if we don't read the Bible, we cannot tell our children, you know, what the Bible is all about, what the contents is all about, right? We can only teach them what we know. We can, we can only impart to them who we are. We cannot change them into something that we're not. Okay, we're talking about training our children in the ways of God. Okay, so... This is actually great news for singles and for those uh, who have no children yet. Why? Because you have more time to prepare. Okay? You have more time to prepare. Uh, you should focus on making your life pleasing to God for the benefit of your future spouses or your future children. Okay? You have more time to prepare. So that's great news for you. Okay? But the first point is, if we learn from the passage in Deuteronomy is, we should start with ourselves. Start with ourselves. Okay? Number two, what should we aim, what should be our aim as parents, according to the passage? Sabi doon, for our children and their children to fear the Lord our God. Okay? So that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God. So it's not just us who needs to fear the Lord. Our children also. And not only our children, but you know, the next generation. You know, the, the, the verse uh, the, the phrase is saying, um, and the children after them. So it can be your grandchildren, it can be the children of your grandchildren, the descendants. Okay? So we, it's important for us to pass on, to pass on your knowledge about the, the word. Okay. Um, I have the privilege, actually, of I have four children, by the way. I have a twenty-year-old, to twenty-one I have this year. The <coughs> second co is nineteen, and I have twin boys, the boys are fourteen years old. Um, I had the, the privilege, God granted me the privilege of um, leading them to a deep knowledge of, of God. So, how did that come about? I, you know, I, we started with just reading the Bible. Yung, I mean, it's not the, the Bible that you read as an adult, it's the, it's the children's Bible. Because they were still young back then. Uh, we started with that, but after the, you know, they learned how to read and understand concepts, we graduated to the real, real <laughs> Bible, the adult Bible. Okay? But I went through that with them, to that process with them. So as we do that, um, they would have many questions. They would ask me about my faith. And uh, of course, I would explain to them what I believe in. And um, 
because of that, through that, I had an opportunity to share the gospel to them. And they accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in their lives. So I consider that as a, as a great joy, a great source of joy sa buhay ko. Um, it's, it's, it's a joy to be a God's instrument of salvation in the lives of our children. Don't you think so? So, ito yung aim natin as parents, eventually. Our aim is for our children to know God, to fear God, not only our children, but our grandchildren and their descendants after them. What happens when they do that? When they learn to obey God, when they learn to fear God, God promised in Deuteronomy that they will be blessed. Okay? They will be blessed. God promised that those who are obedient will be blessed. True blessing, true blessing then, is a consequence of obedience. Okay? Remember that. True blessing is a consequence of obedience. Sometimes we have our priorities in reverse. We prioritize blessings before obedience. Okay? We pursue after the gift instead of the giver. As parents, ano ba yung mga obsession natin? We're here in Singapore. Obsession natin is to get them into a good school. To get high PSLE scores, high O-level scores, high A-level scores, get them to NUS, NTU, all those nice schools. <coughs> yung obsession natin, eh, di ba? Anthony, umuho ka. <laughs> yung obsession natin as parents, we want them to get A's in class, in, in, their, in their subjects in class, in school. I mean, there's a whole website, Kiasu Parents, that dedicates itself, you know, giving advice on that. You know, they never run out of material <laughs> to put in that website. Lagi may bago. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a national obsession. Uh, why do why we do that? Because we want, we think in our minds that, you know, if they go to good schools, if they get good grades, they go to good schools, they go to good universities, they get good jobs, and therefore they will be successful. That's what we think, right? It's not necessarily true. A lot of people would go through that, a graduate, mataas ang degree, pero nasaan yung buhay nila? Sometimes even success destroys them instead of bringing them closer to God if they are stumbling block. Okay? So, it's not an assurance that they will be happy, that they will be blessed. If we pursue the gifts rather than the giver. Okay? So let's set our priorities straight. It's the, the Lord first before the blessings. Blessings, true blessings, are, conse are consequences of obedience to God. Okay? And our children sees that. Um, yung, yung, minsan yung obsession natin sa worldly things, achievement, good universities, upush natin sila mag tuition even during weekends. Okay? Um, you, you may not tell them, you know, Wow, what does it they want for their lives? But nakikita nila yon. They see that, and they when they see when they see us being more obsessed with success or fame or popularity or status. Kasi minsan ginagawa natin yun not really for them, eh, but you know to to give more status to our family. Must you know when people know that you know my my son or my daughter is going to a good school. Parang wow, parang nagawa yan so. Uh, can you give me tips? Something like that. So you, the relation status mo as a parent. So sometimes you're not really doing it for the cat, for the child. You're doing it for yourself. Okay? But when our children sees that, um, that we are more focused on those things, instead of training them first to obey God, then they learn that uh, God is not really a priority in their lives. 
God is not really a priority in their lives. So there, there are more important things apart from knowing God. <clears throat> so consequently, they, they would pursue those things when they are older, and they would set God aside. And sometimes they do it because they're, the worst case is, they're trying to please us, you know, they, they pursue success, you know, with single-mindedness, setting God aside, because they're trying to please us. And so, we have just, you know, in that situation, become unintentionally a stumbling block in their spiritual growth. You don't want that. So, teach them to pursue God first. God first of all. Blessings will come when they obey His commands. Okay, so success in parenting is to see our children following after Jesus. But before they follow Jesus, guess who will be who they will follow first? The parents. Right? They will follow you. Look at the picture. Can you see what's happening here? Is the child, small child, following the footsteps of his father. Okay. So they will follow you first. Knowing this, then, that they will follow us first, what can we do as parents to influence them? to eventually follow Christ. Number one, we should model obedience and the love of the Lord. Deuteronomy 6, 8 to 5, 3 and 5, Hear Israel and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. With all your whole being, love God. So firstly, we should model obedience and the love of the Lord. Because we know that they, if they are obedient, then it will go well with them. That's what the Bible, the verse promise. Okay. So children copy our example, whether good or bad. Sabi natin kanina, you know, you can be a good role model or a bad example. They will copy you. Modeling is an effective way of teaching. Sabi sa 1 Corinthians, be imitators of me, sabi ni Paul, just as I also am an imitator of Christ. So children would copy us, copy our exam example of whether good or, get or bad. You can tell your children, uh, just do what I say, not what I do. Do some of you do that, dear children? Just do what I say, not what I do. It doesn't work, okay? It doesn't work. They will follow after you, and they will do what you do, what they see you doing. So you need to walk your talk. Then you can say, like Paul here, be imitators of me, just as I also am of Christ. You need to walk your talk. Values are taught, not taught. Your actions speak so loudly, I can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> so, wives, sometimes, um, remember wives, you cannot teach your children to respect his or her father if you don't do it yourselves. Sabi sa Bible, di ba? Wives, respect your husbands. Okay? So sometimes, uh, a wife would be great, would get so angry with the husband that she would complain about him to their children. That's bad. Okay, don't do that. Uh, if you do that, you're pulling down that child's respect or high regard for his father or her father. So guess what will happen? The child would learn to disrespect authorities and treat you, you also as a mother, with less respect as well. Husbands naman. Ano yung commandment sa Bible sa Ephesians about husbands? Love. Love your wives as Christ loves the church. Right? So you should teach and model love for your wives as well in front of your children. Okay? So don't make your children take your side 
if you are arguing with your wife, don't put your child in a situation where he or she is forced to choose between loving you and loving the mom. Okay? So the point is, you should walk the talk in front of your children. Teach them, model what how they're supposed to behave. Okay? Modeling is about authenticity though. It's not about perfection. We will not be perfect. We will never be perfect. See by perfect dito. You can go over here. <laughs> We're not gonna be perfect. So when we make mistakes, we must model humility as well to our children. We, we must be willing to admit our mistakes and ask for forgiveness. So last week I remember some of us said, you know, we have a temper problem when it comes to our children. And minsan uh, talaga, I mean, you're put in a difficult situation talaga mag, you get so angry and then you lose your temper and then you spank your child okay that's not that's that's not good that's uh that's wrong okay um so when you do that i mean pag nakakalma ka na, you realize that you did something wrong you should approach your child and ask for forgiveness say i'm sorry uh that daddy or mommy lost his temper her temper I should not have done that. Uh, please forgive me for what happened, for what I did. Okay, you should be, you should model humility. They will see that, they will respect that, and they will act accordingly in the future. That is a teaching moment for them. Okay? Number two, how to influence children. Teach them his words diligently regularly so Deuteronomy sabi and these words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart and you shall teach them diligently to your sons and shall talk of them when you sit in your house when you walk by the way when you lie down and when you rise up okay so it's important also to know what to teach right it's important to know what to teach you can teach something if you don't know it so that's why you have an advantage here, you who are attending GLC, okay? Because uh, we've studied a lot of things about the, the Word of God. You know more than if you have not gone through these courses. It's important for you to know what to teach. So, not just GLC, okay? Do your uh, spiritual disciplines. Read the Word, read the Bible every day, okay? Listen to to your pastor, listen to the sermons at church, listen to your D group leader as he leads you in your D group. Discuss it with your with your spouse or with your, with, with your friends. Okay? Un understand. Basta kayo ng commentary, read, read John MacArthur, listen to John MacArthur. And understand, you know, the deeper, uh, have, a, have a deeper understanding of the Word of God through those things. Okay? Teach them um, early. How how do you teach them? Teach them early, as soon as they are able to learn. I remember um, <clears throat> si Hana, my my eldest. She's 21 now, uh, but I remember when she was just a toddler, and she was on a walker. Do some? Do all of you know what a walker is? No, yung mga single dito pa hindi lang yung walker. Yung walker is like a, how do I describe it? It's a round contraption. Uh, there's a seat, parang suspended seat, and they put the child there. So, so supposedly the, the intention is to allow the child to walk, to help the child develop your muscles for walking. So, she was on a walker. I remember this, like vividly. Like I, I just, I can see it right now. I can picture it in my mind. She was on a walker. I was about to go upstairs in our second, the second floor, this house namin. And we had a, a water dispenser, Wilkins water dispenser, the corner of the kitchen. Now, previously, previous to that, to this incident, 
we would always find water dun sa, sa bottom, on the floor beside the dispenser. So we were wondering, uh, how can there be water there? I mean, no, none of us adults would spill water on the floor beside the dispenser. And, and we wouldn't play with the spout. Okay? So, I remember, I was walking upstairs, on the stairs, going up, and I just happened to look behind me. Uh, Tohana was on the walker. And I saw her, uh, he was reaching for the spout. He, he tied it, perf she tied it perfectly. Uh, when I turned my back on her, I mean, she, I left her, she was not nowhere near that, the, the dispenser. But when I turned my back, I was about to go upstairs, she tied, she tied it perfectly. And I, I looked back, I saw her looking at me and reaching for the spout. <laughs> so I knew immediately, uh, this, this child is the one doing this incident, okay? And the way she looked, I could see that she understands that she's not doing something right, that she's doing something bad. So at that moment, I understood, you know, this, this child, you know, she's predisposed to doing bad. There's sin, you know, in her, and she's, you know, predisposed to that. And, and she understands at that point, she was just a toddler, she understands the difference between bad and good, between good and bad. So I started spanking her at that time. I started spanking her. Because she understands now. Okay? So teach them early, as soon as they're able to learn between what is good and what is bad. Teach them alongside. So read, read the Bible together, as I was telling you uh, earlier. Read the Bible together with them. Explain to them what the Bible teaches. Teach them about God. Teach them about His role in your life, your beliefs. And teach them about themselves as well. Uh, about your family, about the world, about the, you know their friends. I believe, you know, uh, before they were formal schooling, um, a, for, for a child to, you know, they can't choose the profession yet, right? uh, but during that time, for them to grow into a profession, they would study with their fathers or their mom, their mothers. So if the father is a shoemaker, then the child would be a shoemaker as well. The father would pass on the trait to his children, right? So I'm wondering why right now, a lot of parents would choose to abdicate their responsibility to teach their children in that way. For example, they would say, whatever spiritual knowledge my child needs to learn, the Sunday school teacher can accomplish that. It's not my role, it's the Sunday school teacher's role. Or, if you're an engineer, I don't see why you can teach engineering to your children. Sometimes, we as parents, we think, you know, I've gone through that, I don't want to teach math anymore to our children, let the school accomplish that for, for him or her. You are in the best position to teach your children about math, about science, about all those things. Okay? You've gone through it. Eh? You're here, successful, in Singapore. You've gone through that successfully. So you should teach that to your children. There's no reason for me, in my mind, uh, for the, you know, the teacher to be more competent than you. I mean, they may have PhDs or they may have master de master's degrees, but you are the, the parent of the child. The child will listen to you more. The child will understand, you know, what you're teaching more. They will learn it more quickly than if they're being taught by the professors. Okay? I'm not saying you teach, you take them out of formal school and then teach them yourself. I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying you can still play a part in their lives, even at that uh, 
in that part of their lives. Don't abdicate your your position of authority, your responsibility to teach them. Okay? Just because they're going to formal school. Teaching our children involves more quality time. The more quality time that you spend with your children, the more influence you will have in their lives. For children, um, love is spelled T-I-M-E. Now I have to, I have to stop here and, and uh, note to you that uh, there is a myth going around among parents saying that quality time with my children is more important than quantity time. Have you heard that? Quality time is more important than quantity time. <clears throat> now, some parents would use this myth to, to ease their guilt of spending too little time with their kids. Okay? So this is not the biblical model. When God instructed parents in, in Deuteronomy Kanina to impart His law to their children, notice how much time is involved. Uh, it was said there, these words I'm commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. So that involves a lot of time. Okay. So it's not entirely true. Quality time is more important than quantity time. You have to spend quantity time with our children as well. You cannot schedule quality time. You cannot say, okay, we'll sit down here uh, after after the main course before before dessert. Okay, we'll spend five minutes of quantity time or quality time. Sorry, we we'll spend five minutes of quality time. You can't do that. Okay, you can't do that. You can't schedule quality time. So faithfulness in parenting requires that we make ourselves available. Many unplanned magic moments arise out of those times of sitting, walking, lying down, and rising up. Okay, so view time as an investment. It's an investment uh, on your children, on their future. Okay, be available and look for magic moments. What are magic moments? Magic moments are times when they are very vulnerable, when they open up to you, times when they invite you into, the, into their inner life. Uh, these are times when they like to listen to you. They're very receptive. So you have to seize these moments when it comes. Okay? Remember, these cannot be scheduled. Magic moments cannot be scheduled. Niyo po yung schedule yan. That's why it's important to spend quantity time with your children. When when magic ma moments happen, though, you have to seize seize it and don't let it pass. Okay? If it's a teaching moment, teach the child. If it's a moment to bind yourself, parang uh, bonding time with your children, then take, you know, seize that. Don't let it go. Bond with the child. Okay. So for my children, sometimes these moments happen when they're about to sleep. Okay, so when they're about to sleep, they remember the things that happened to them throughout the day, and whatever it is that, you know, has been bugging their mind their whole day, they remember it and they ask me, Daddy, do you know what this is, my brother? How this happened to me today, what do you think? How do you feel about it? So those are the times when you know, they're more, very receptive to what I'm trying to teach to them, to what I'm telling them. Okay? Sometimes before going to sleep, sometimes during dinner, as we were talking, they would say, Caleb would say things like, uh, you know, um, what do you think about this, uh, this classmate of mine who said this thing about Christians? What do you think about that? So those are, you know, it's difficult. For, for, for us parents to, to, to respond to that sometimes. Sometimes a parent, you know, a parent is not very comfortable talking about those things to their children. Maybe because we don't know the answer to those questions. Uh, a lot of times it's like that. Or we don't want to delve into the more personal details of their lives. Okay, don't, don't be like that. Okay. Uh, if you don't know the answer, you can be very honest. I, I don't really know the answer to that. But we can find out together. We can research it together. 
so that we will understand together what it means. Okay? You can be very honest. Okay. And and don't don't um, don't put up a wall between you and your children. If they want to become personal, personally involved with your life, personally involved with you, if they're opening up their personal lives to you, don't shut it down by putting up a wall. Open more and respond. Respond. Be part of their personal lives. Okay? Even if it feels uncomfortable for you. Even if you were not raised that way. Okay? You should change. We should all, we should all change. Okay? So magic moments. Um, some practical applications. So, first is, try to date your children individually. Do you... Some of the parents here, do you do that? <clears throat> do you date your children individually? Okay, that's good. Some of you are nodding your head. That's good. Um, it's, it creates a, a very intimate moment between the child and the, per, the, the parent. You know, the child can open up. Sometimes they, they can't open up when the sibling is there beside them. Or if they're with the... There are two parents present. Sometimes they just want to to connect with you on an individual basis. You as a father or you as a mother. Okay, they can do that when you date with them individually. Okay. Do things together. I know sometimes it's boring what they're doing. Uh, sometimes we don't have the patience to stay with them, you know, to do what they want to do. But uh, we have to do it. Anyway, we have to do it. We have to be patient and uh, do things together with them. Things that they like, okay? Not the things that you like. <laughs> things that they like to do. Know what they like and what they don't like. Okay? So make an effort to, to get to know them on a deeper, in a deeper way. Know their strengths and weaknesses. Be aware of who your child is. Right? That's very important. Because if the child has no inclination to music and you keep pushing him to, to learn the guitar or the piano, then he's just viewing that uh, opportunity for you. He's saying you're giving him an opportunity or her an opportunity. He just views it as a chore, a task that, you know, an unpleasant task that he doesn't want to do because oh, he has no inclination for, for that. Okay? So you have to know their strengths and weaknesses. And then you have to resolve conflicts. You know, there are conflicts that happen within the family, between siblings, between brothers and sisters, and even between the child and the parent. Okay, resolve those conflicts. Okay. Number three, how to influence our children, discipline our children. We should discipline them. As we read in Ephesians 6.4, Bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. In Proverbs 13, verse 24, it says, He who spares his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him promptly. Okay, we should discipline, not punish. You see the difference? We should discipline, not punish. The purpose of discipline is not to inflict pain, but to elicit virtue, to elicit holiness. Okay? It is not to condemn, but to correct. So, the motivation for discipline is love, not anger or judgment. So when you spank your children, your child, you don't do it out of anger. Never do it out of anger. It should always be out of love. Okay. <clears throat> it's important to explain your child to your child why he or she, why they're being punished or they're being disciplined. It's not to hurt them, but because they did something bad, they have to be trained to follow the right path, the correct path. I remember when I was young, there was one time um, my parents called me in. I was playing outside their house. 
So I was having fun, and my parents called me in into the house, and then they started spanking me. So I said, what did they do? I mean, why am I getting spanked? And, and for, for days and weeks and months after that, I st you know, that stuck into my mind because I couldn't understand why I was being spanked at that time. Okay? So don't make that mistake for your children. Tell them why they are being spanked, why they are being disciplined. Explain to them clearly. Otherwise, it would breed resentment. It would breed bitterness in the heart of the child. Okay? How do we discipline? As I said, begin early. As soon as they show perception of what is good and what is bad. Uh, number two, one command obedience. Okay? <clears throat> Some parents are like this. Uh, Daniel, please, please get into the house. Stop playing and get into the house. Daniel doesn't follow. What would the parent do? I will come to five, ba? Huh? I will come to five. <laughs> if I finish and you're not yet in the house, I will, you will get spanked. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Hindi pa rin pumasok. Nandun pa rin. Oh, okay, I'll give you another chance. I ca I'll come one to three. Pagka, <laughs> don't be like that, okay? Don't be like that. One command to be just lang. One command, if they break it, discipline. Okay? Discipline ka agad. Spank out of love and concern, not of anger. Don't use your hands to spank. Okay? If you use your hands to care for your children, to take care for your children. So don't use your hands to spank. <laughs> Older children, um, of course, if the child is older, uh, you don't spank him anymore or her anymore, right? Uh, <laughs> there are other things. So natural consequences, like you allow the person or the child to, to experience the natural consequences of his or her wrong decision. Okay? You don't protect him or her. Or if he did, they did something wrong, you give them rewards. So that's how you train them up. Are you disciplined them? Discipline means not only the negative but the positive. Okay, you train them up. Number four, do not provoke or exas exasperate them. Again, in Ephesians, father, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in discipline instructions of the Lord. Colossians 3.21, fathers, do not exasperate your children so that they will not lose heart. Okay? Provoke or exasperate means to rouse someone to anger. Okay? How do we do that? Sometimes we do that by being overprotective. Okay? We're too protective uh, of our child. You know, don't, don't run. You might fall. Uh, you might trip and fall. Uh, don't do this. Don't do that. Just sit there. Don't move. Don't breathe. <laughs> it's frustrating for the child. It's frustrating for the child. They can't. You, we're not allowing them to exercise their own judgment. Okay? They need to make decisions on their own. They need to learn to make decisions on their own. So don't be overprotective. Okay? Sometimes we exasperate our children by excessive discipline, okay? too much spanking too much discipline, too much don't do this, don't do that. That can cause resentment and bitterness in the heart of the child. Sometimes we're inconsistent. Inconsistent in discipline natin. Depending on the mood of the parent. Okay? If the parent has a good, uh, he, he, he or she came home with, in a good mood, then I can watch TV for five hours. That's fine. I will not hear anything from, from the parent. But, if they came home in a bad mood, then if I if I exceed one hour watching TV, then I get spanked. So, in the child, in the mind of the child, he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't. You know, it's frustrating because it's unpredictable. You know, because it depends on something that you know 
un is unpredictable as well. So don't be inconsistent in your discipline. Okay? If you spank the person, if you if you lay down a rule, follow it with the child, okay? If you want to change it, agree with the child that you want to change. But if it's not being changed, follow it. Okay? But sinabi nyo na, you get spanked if you play, for example, the Xbox on a weekday, then follow it through. You spank the person. If you say, uh, you will get spanked if you sneak your, your phone out and, you know, watch YouTube on a weekday, then follow it up. Don't, be, don't spank him on Monday and then on Tuesday when he did the same thing. You don't spank him. Don't be inconsistent. Be consistent with your discipline to, the to your children. Okay? So, unkindness. Sometimes we exasperate our children by our unkindness. We have to be kind. Of course, we have to be kind to our children. I, th I don't think that's a problem for, for the people here. But uh, when, the, the, when the parent is unkind, they feel unloved. The children will feel unloved. I uh, have to go faster, sorry. So favoritism, sometimes uh, we exercise favoritism, especially if we have several children, we exercise, we, we uh, have a favorite among our children. Don't do that. Uh, that's double standards, okay? I have twin boys. My youngest are twin boys. And I have to be, we have to be very careful that they don't see that we are favoring one over the other. Otherwise, you know, they will, you know, we, they will be, Resentment, uh, resentful of us. Okay. Uh, don't be the dictatorial or abusive. Okay. Um, and lastly, don't be, don't pressure them too much or cheat. Number five, affirmation. Okay. Positive words impact impact us positively. Negative words impact us negatively. So words have power. In Proverbs 18, verse 21, it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Ephesians 4, 29, Let no un unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification, according to the need of the moment, so that it will give grace to those who will hear. Okay? So be your children's fan. You have, you have K-pop groups who hear... You probably are a fan of K-pop groups or whatever boy band that you grew up with or girl band, whatever. But be a fan of your children. Be a fan of them. Don't be critical uh, that you only see their imperfections or their mistakes. They're not perfect, so there's always going to be something that you can you can notice. Don't, don't be like that, okay? Uh, how you view them is important. Understand that they are predisposed to sin and your role is to train them to do what is good okay so that's why it's important affirm their gifts and abilities their uniqueness okay be positive you have you have to have as parents you have to have detective eyes for good character and compliment them sabe um, you have to compliment them five times five compliments for every correction it's hard, right? But you know, in, in, toast, in Toastmasters, whenever we evaluate a speaker, some of you here attended Toastmasters, whenever we evaluate speakers, it would always be like a sandwich method. We call it the sandwich method. So you give a compliment first, and then the, the criticism, constructive criticism, and then another compliment. Okay, so you do the same thing for your children. Okay? Compliment them more than you criticize, okay? Affirmation deepens relationship, deepens the relationship between the parent and the child. The closer children are to their parents, the less they are influenced by their peers and vice versa, okay? Number six, pray, okay? Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
So no matter, actually no matter what we do as parents, even if we do everything perfectly as parents, there's no assurance that our children will turn out well. They have their own wills, their own lives to live. They grow old. But they are eventually, you know, in the hands of God. God is in control of their lives. So petition God for your children. Do, do any one of you know George McCluskey? Have you heard that name? George McCluskey. When, when George McCluskey started the family, he decided to invest one hour every day in prayer for his children because he wanted his children to follow Christ. So he invested one hour every day. Then he expanded his prayers to include his grandchildren and great-grandchildren. So every day between 11 a.m. and 12 p.m., 12 noon, he would pray for the next three generations. As the years went by, his daughters, he had two daughters, committed their lives to Christ and married men who became ministers in their local church. And these two couples produced four girls and one boy. Each of the girls married a minister and the boy became a pastor. So still everyone you know, is coming to know God and serving in the church. The first two children born to this generation were both boys. And after leaving secondary school, the two cousins chose the same college and became roommates. During their second year, one of the boys decided to go into the ministry. Okay, so one boy is left. The other didn't. He decided to, you know, he felt lots of pressure to continue the family legacy, but he decided to pursue his interest in psychology. So it seems like your prayer to George McCluskey at this point wasn't answered, wasn't fully answered. But you know what happened? This boy who pursued psychology, he graduated in a doctorate degree, with a doctorate degree, and he eventually wrote books for parents that became bestsellers. Eventually, he started a radio program that was heard around the world each day. The man's name, James Dobson. James Dobson, focus on the family. So now, you know that George McCluskey's prayers were answered. He was just an ordinary man, just like you and me. But his prayers had an extraordinary effect on so much of the world, not only within his own family. So pray, pray for your children. Don't forget that. So what, how, do, how do we influence our children? Number one, model obedience and the love of the Lord. Number two, teach them His words diligently, regularly. Number three, discipline our children. Number four, do not provoke or exasperate them. Number five, affirm, affirm them, affirmation. And number six, prayer, pray to them, pray for them. Again, what is our, how do we measure our success as parents? In Deuteronomy it says, your children and their children after them may fear the Lord your God. That is how you measure your success. So earlier I told you, ask your, tell your seatmates what is your greatest fear and your greatest joy as parents or as someone who is over somebody. My greatest fear as a father is to see my children turning away from God. That's my greatest fear. It's not that they, they would fail an exam or they would not get jobs. Not that. My greatest fear is that they would turn away from God. And my greatest joy, you know, consequently, is to see them following after Christ. Because when I know that they're following after Christ, I know that God is in control of their lives. And God will provide for them all the promises that are in the Bible will happen in their lives because they're fine. So I hope you as parents will have that same attitude in your family 
with your children as well. So, before we end the session, can we just offer this up, offer this time to the Lord again in prayer? Father God, we thank you once more. We thank you for the lessons that we've learned here tonight. We pray, Father God, that we uh, are able to pick up one, one or two things, a couple of things from this lesson and apply it personally in our own lives to our children, how we deal with them. Father, our greatest, our prayer to you, our deep personal prayer to you, Father God, is to see our children and the people we're discipling, the people we are leading, to see them follow after you with their whole heart, with their whole strength, with their whole being, Lord God. Father, we commit them to you. We pray, Father God, that you will work in their lives and make it a success for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Sabi, natutusapin namin yung... Kasi kami yung daddy. Kailangin daddy ko. Dito siya ngayon. Na-enjoy namin yung... Even, even nga sa interview, magkasama kami. Sobrang na-experience ko sa daddy ko yun. Na talagang pinaramdam pinaram siya namin mga kapalid yung... Yung, yung love, uh, being, being well loved. And then, ganun din siya. Yung din yung experience sa daddy niya. And then, even kay Florence, so kami hindi naman na feeling niyan as negative kung baga enjoy namin kasi dating in time na magkaroon na kami na same family namin we will live and live dun sa spouse namin so iyon yung iyon yung maganda yung good parenting for us and then sure meron din naman mga bad bad Memories, pero huwag natin pag-usapin ito. Si Daddy eh. Magkakataw mo na. Magkakataw mo na yan. And then, nakakas ako maraming maraming biggest discoveries dun sa number two. Pero, ang mas na-appreciate ko yung sa lesson tonight is yung you need to model yung gustong patutunan nung, nung, nung children mo or kasi for me dahil panganay so I, I make sure na inagalan ko yung parents ko kasi gagayahin, gagayahin nila yung gagayahin ng mga kapatid ko yun yung mas mula sa akin apat yung mga kapatid yung lalaki tapos yung kasama ko dati ayun tapos may nag-aaral pa sa amin dun so uh, I try to help in in financial uh, financially para may Hindi ka naman sa dinedemand na magtumulong di sila, pero siyempre, kung sa sila nagbibigay. So yun, model, model yun po. It's important yung modeling, tama ka. Even for singles, sabi ko I have still have time to prepare. Okay, so um, I guess this group is finished as well. Sinong pag-report sa inyo? Good evening. Okay, sa number one, yung example lang yung parenting, medyo marami, uh, at saka yung bad din. Pero one thing lang ang struck sa group is yung, ano, yung seize the moment. Na kapag uh, yung time na yung pag-open up yung, yung, yung children sa parent, tapos yung parent is binablock na niya agad. So yung may, 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 ano na, may hesitation at saka fear. So just like, pag express ka na, oh, uh, bawin na liligaw na po sa akin. Oh, huwag ka na mag-aaral mo na <laughs> So, again, yeah. so, parang, in a way, sana kung, you know, if he knows, if he knows the, the thing na, at last is the moment, he let your children to open up, para naman ma-figure ma out natin kung so, ano yung talaga yung situation. <laughs> so, so, yun. Then, yung sa bad parenting, it must be a lesson to us na, yun nga, um, we have to we have to give time also to the kids kasi yun nga yung uh, we don't know that yung parang time na ibinibigay natin sa kids it will really uh, groom them and make them a skillful person tapos uh, parang successful person in the future kasi gagamitin nila yung experience na yun na nandun yung parent nila which I experience so yung yung time na nandun yung parent ko yung parents ko 
sumusuport sa akin sa activities sa school, sa academic, and other extracurricular. Na find out ko talaga na I really achieve like na bag sa champion ako or first of all because of the because of the parents support. Pag wala sila, I really ha I don't have parang wala ako wala ako mong nasasinda lang po sa step ang kada. And then yung 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 sa sa life na manika Anthony is more on ayon modeling din na because uh, if you model wrongly so magiging bali na rin yung yung makakapi ng mga siblings mo if you are the if you're the older special so number two what is the biggest discovery so yung unang biggest discovery namin the use your hand to correct your to correct your children the number two is you have to put the the word of god in your in your in your post or your door post so that your children can read it when they in and out of the house and so they will uh, also think that it, you, their house will be a home really for, for, for comfort and also for learning. The number three is yung, I know, um, you have to share, you have, if, you, if, if you are saying negative one, one word, you have to affirm it in five times. So napakalaki discovery. You have to really to, to cover up yung mga losses ng ego ng bata para yun, makarecover from siya. Then some more, Marami ko, marami mo ko. Pero this is really a good thing. And of, of course, you good you have to, yeah, have to be a good model as well. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. So, marami tayong very nice tonight. Okay, who's next? Single perspective. <laughs> uh, good evening, po. So the first one, you uh, know, uh, what are the examples of good parenting? So I share with some of the experience ko with my mom, because my mom, uh, single mom, shot. My mom, uh, my dad died when I was very, very young, eleven months old. So uh, when I was a teen. Uh, I was not Christian then, pero I, I, I was curious, so I, I was drunk, and I, I came back umaga na sa bahay. So instead of her nagging, she asked me, uh, okay ba ako? Did I eat already? So then she asked me to go to my room and just rest. And when I woke up, she gave me something to eat. And yun, chinek niya ako, okay ba ako hindi? So, Ang impression ko, instead of her nagging and you know beating me and isak sak sa kote ko na mali yung ginawa ko, instead she give me a uh, compassion at sa uh, love na o oh, anak uh, mali yung ginawa mo, so you shouldn't do that again and see the effect. So and then marami kasi history. My mom is quite quite nice to me and she really worked hard to provide to me and my sister. So, ang laki ng impact sa akin kasi uh, she's too good that it, it, it struck me na dapat hindi ako gumawa ng masama. And it's really unfair for her to actually do a wrong thing and hurt her. And she's already sacrificing a lot for us. So, yeah. Yun yung ano. Yung biggest thing. So, yung biggest discovery naman is uh, uh, magaling sinabi ni Kuya Mario with regards dun sa quality time at saka dun sa quantity yung misconception ng quality time but I do not discount na definitely mahalaga yung quality time kasi uh, dito you could have a long time with your kid pero siguro kung wala naman affection wala ng intimacy parang siguro hindi rin ganun ka okay so yeah, we cannot disregard yung quality time Pero yung quantity time then is really, really important. Kasi yung affection, yung intimacy. Let's say for example, yung siguro nung, nung grade school ako. And uh, tawag dito, uh, kasi my mom is working, single mom. So, so she really need to work. So pag may parent and teacher activity, wala siya. So, so as much as possible, pag birthday ko nandun siya, graduation and stuff. Pero yung mga small things, parang mararamdaman pa rin ng ano, ng mga, ng mga bata. So, yeah, definitely quality time is important, but as much as possible, we try to be there 
to show intimacy to show love to them. Okay. And ganun din yung sa mga kabrug ko. More on sa ano, sa time din. That's it for us. Thank you. So yeah, quality time is important as well. Okay. It's important, um, yung, yung, yung quality time, you know, sabi nga natin kanina, we can't really schedule it. So it happens during quantity time. Okay. So important yun. Yung relationship yun with your with your parents. So nakikita ko ang dami sa atin ang reaction about yung experiences natin about our parents. And, and and that is good. I mean, as as you're here right now tonight, na realize mo what what they did wrong, what they did right. That is good. It's it's a learning that you can pass on to your children in the future. Okay, so who's next? Next group? Kasi ano, sabi ko bang maalaalam pa yung buhay ko. <laughs> Kasi ako wala parents. I mean, meron, pero wala sila. Yun lang naman yung ano, problem sa, sa kanila. Uh, may parents sila. So, may mga good example sila. Ako naman, naging sa akin is, kaka siya example nila. So, ayoko yung giyahin. Nag-research ako, nagbabasa ako ng Bible, nagbabasa ako ng mga book. So, para meron akong guide. Kasi wala akong guide sa parents ko. Yun. Okay, yung mga... Good points, yung mga good points sa parents at saka yung uh, share ko nga sa kanila, meron kaming thank you Jesus. So, bago kami matulog, isa sa ginagawa namin is, okay, it's thank you Jesus time. So, every time na nasa bahay kami, bago kami matulog, oh, thank you Jesus. So, saan muna, oldest to youngest? So, pag oldest to youngest, muna si Elias. Pag youngest to oldest, mauna yung bunso. So, ganun. So, may thank you Jesus kami. Tapos, after maka thank you Jesus lahat, meron, oh, so, doon kami pray. Para tinuturuan namin sa kanila, isa yung bunso ko, sabi, Why do I always have to thank Jesus? <laughs> Alam nga, no? So, I explained to sa kanya, no, you have to thank Jesus. Basta lahat na explanation, ginawa ko niya. So, yun. <laughs> Tapos, um, ano ba to? Parents as teacher. Ayun nga, sabi niya, yung parents niya is para naging teacher sa kanya, nagtuturo ng math, ng English. So, naging okay siya sa school, and naging okay sa kanya. Parang naging positive sa kanya yung studying because of that. So yun. Tapos, meron din kami reading uh, ng Bible every night. So, yung asawa ko yung nag-lead sa mga anak ko to, uh, to read. Tapos, meron kami question and answer. Oh, you listen because I will ask questions. May points sila para nag-aagawan sila ng points. So, sabi, uh, si Jesus na crucify sa, so, answer sila. So, may points sila. Ganun. That's, I'm the winner. Ganun. So, yun. Masaya. Ginagawa namin parang laro para nag-enjoy sila. So, kailangan nila yung mga characters of Bible, kahit pa paano. Ayun. Tapos, yun nga, yung tulad ng sinabi ni, ano, pag ni Kuya Mario na, pag minsan napapalo ko sila sa anger, out of anger, lalapitan ko sila, then I will ask for forgiveness. Tapos, sabi nyo, okay, I forgive you. Mabilis na na sila ang forgive me. <laughs> so, sabi nga na sa awa ka, lagi na na tayo ang hinihingi ng forgiveness. So, kailangan din natin watch rin yung sarili natin. Kasi baka dumating sa time na Na, na may isip na talaga sila at mahirapan na sila mag-forgive. Parang gano'n. So ngayon madali, okay mommy, I forgive you. Easy lang naman for them yun. Pero dating na panahon, may maroon na rin silang heartaches. So baka mahirap na sila mag-forgive. <laughs> Ayun. Tapos yung praying for our children and maraming maraming conversations with them. Kahit na napapagod na ako, minsan gusto kong sabihin, huwag ka naman salita kasi ang dadaldal ng mga bata. So yung mga anak ko is two and, uh, three and five. So, Ang dami nilang tanong, talaga. Pero sinusubukan kong answer, tapos may sasabihin ko. May mga times sasabihin ko na, I don't know eh. Sasab tapos uh, sasabihin ng panganay ko, Okay, mami, let's research. Kasi like ko sinasabi sa kanila, I don't know, baby eh. Let's go on the internet, let's research. So, ganun na rin siya. Mami, let's research. So, ganun na rin siya. <laughs> so, yun nga. Yun yung isang ano ko, yung sabi niya sa akin, uh, I want to be like mommy. So, yun nga. Sobrang... Importante sa akin ng modeling, sabi ko, ha, you want to be like me. <laughs> Nakaka-pressure na nitingnan niya pala kung paano ko kumilo, so paano ko salita, kung paano ko itrat yung asawa ko. So parang sobrang nakatakot na dalawang anak kong babae, so dapat maayos akong babae. 
sa yun. Tapos yung mga bad things naman, sobrang nahanda, ang dami na namang pasensya. So bad naman, yung ano, spanking in anger, parang naalala ko si ate. Sabi niya, kahit ano ba nang putay nampas niya. So ganun din ako before. So ngayon yung mga anak ko, pag nagkaaway sila sa isa't isa, sa dalawa sila babae. Hinahapas na din yung ate, yung kapatid niya. Hinahasin, tapos kung ano rin niya, panapalo niya. So sabi ko, na ko bad example, para kasi naging ano na rin nila na pag galit ka pala, pwede ka pumalo. Parang ganun. So yun, isa sa... Isa sa yung iniiwasan ko kasi para nakukuha nila na you have the right to spank pag nagalit ka. Parang ganun. You have to hurt, uh, you have the ano, uh, karapatan na ano, saktan siya kasi ginalit ka niya. Parang ganun. So yun, yun isa sa iniiwasan ko siya. Tapos yung overprotective siya ka, do do this, do do that. Ganun. Parang hindi nakakapag-explore ano ko. Ngayon, pag nasa school, ayaw nang sabi niya, eh, ano, parang may pag may sayo sila, pag nakatingin ako, ayaw niya gumalo, pag gano'n na siya. Masabi niya sa akin, Mami, you cover your eyes. Nung kinover ko yung eyes ko, sumayaw. Tapos sabi ko, ano ba ito anak ko? Sabi ko, bakit ayaw pa na ulit? So, nakatrapilari yung ano ko, pero binibidyo ko siya. Pero sumasayo siya, dahil hindi ako nakatingin. So, parang naisip ko, sabi ko kay Las, siguro before masyado, kung don't do this, don't do that, ganyan, ganyan. So, parang nalilimit siya, pag nakatingin ako. So, yun, yun yung iniwas ako. Pag, pag, papaalam siya lagi kung may gawin siya, sige, go lang, ngayon, go lang go. Pero syempre, with limits yun. Kasi before, sobrang, no, do this, do, wag na, humuha ka niyan. Ganun ako dati. So, yun, masyado siya nalilimit. Ako sa inyo, pasensya na. Tapos, <laughs> ako naman yun nga, wala akong model na, sa, as a par, uh, na parents. So, yun nga, Bible lang talaga yung basis ko at mga books na binibas ako. Tapos siya nang drive sa conclusion immediately kasi minsan, yun nga, may ginawa yung anak ko tapos nang galit ako, ganyan yun pala may reason siya behind that. Yun, isa sa bad. Tapos siya overreaction kasi nung one time sabi niya, Mommy, may teacher, ano, show me blood. <gasps> What blood? Ganun, ganun ako mag-react. Tapos sabi niya sa akin, nothing, Mommy. Nothing. <laughs> so parang tayo naman sa ita. Kasi sabi niya, may teacher, show me blood. What kind of blood? What's that? Ganun naman ako. So sabi niya, nothing, Mommy. Oh no, it's okay, anak, you can tell me everything. <laughs> diba? So, huwag tayo naging over-react. Ano, mag-over-react sa sinasabi nila. So ako, laging na malumanin. And then what happened? Ganun na lang ako malumanin. Ayun. Tapos, ayun nga. Uh, hindi pa kasi kami tapos. Anyway, doon sa number two. Masa ko sana. Doon sa number two, yung biggest impact sa akin, yung verse, sorry. Dahil na ako sa number 2 yung ano yung verse na teach them to your children talking about them when you sit at home when you walk along the road when you lie down when you get up parang alam ko naman siya alam ko naman yun na tuturo mo siya ang mga anak mo yung worthy God pero parang masyado nagsake in sa akin na kahit ano pala yung ginagawa mo kailangan ano um, for the Lord siya para ituturo mo sa kanila i-instill mo na lahat yun for the glory of God same po So, so ang daming learnings, ang daming natin natututunan sharing with each other. Um, ito yun. Um, and not, 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 not all of us have the same family background. You know? And some of us have... Ako, I was raised by a very strict parents. Parang military style. Yung tipong... Uh, hindi overprotective but very dictatorial. Na very traditional. Na pag sinabi ng tatay ko na ganito, uh, kahit mali, sa, sa mind ko, kahit mali yung, yung sinasabi niya, you have to follow. Kasi sinabi niya naman. It's very military style. So it was very hard for me also, when I had my own family, to give uh, autonomy to my children. Parang na-condition yung mind mo na ganun kayo, lumaki ka na ganun eh. Parang niisip mo ganun dapat mag-behave yung isang, yung isang tatay. Pero mali pala. Dapat bigyan natin ng opportunity yung mga anak natin to express kung ano yung nararamdaman nila kung ano yung opinion nila about something. So that's very important, to develop yung, yung individuality nila later on. So, the last group, sino kung gusto mag-report? Hindi ko. Hindi ko kung gusto mag-report, pero... <laughs> okay. Uh, Doon po sa example ng number one, good and bad parenting. Ang na-discuss po namin is uh, yung as usual, yung biglang namamalo na hindi nag explain And then yung isang example namin is yung ang father niya is uh, OFW 
and then uh, bihira kang buwi. Ngayon, pag umuwi, siyempre, bakasyon, yung always yun lang yung magaganda. Bakasyon eh. Hindi lang malo, ganyan. So, uh, ang isa namang uh, uh, isang suggestion is yung yung ginagawa ni ano, na dapat open discussion pag uh, nagdi-discipline hindi yung pagsumagot, sumasagot ka pa ganyan, ganyan. so kailangan ma maano din mapakinggan din yung yung sinasabi ng bata and yun sa nga naman is yung yung sa good good parenting is uh, uh, may isang uh, pangyayari kasi sa ano ko sa sarili ko na uh, may decision ako doon na ginawa when I was uh, in college na sabi ko titigil muna ako dahil uh, gusto ko tumigil muna pag work muna pero yung decision na yun hindi sinukwartaan ng tatay ko sabi ng tatay ko, huwag ka tumigil, huwag ka mag-work, hindi ka patapos. Dahil pag nag-work ka na, tumikita ka na, baka hindi ka na bumalik sa pag-aaral. So, hindi ko yun naiisip ng time na yun. Dahil ako naman, hindi ko alam na ganun pala yun. Pero inano niya ako, i pinaliwanagan niya ako ng baluban na hindi niya ako pinipilit na huwag kang tumigil na hindi. Talaga inexplain niya. So, yun. Na-appreciate na ko siya doon kasi nga na-realize ko na kung hindi ko siya sinunod. Kasi mayroon na akong option doon na hindi ko siya sunodin. College na ako. I mean, hindi na ako elementary, hindi na ako high school. Pero, na-appreciate ko yun. Sinunod ko siya. Yun. And then, yung mga discovery. Marami nang nabanggit na discovery. Power of Prayer, Three Generations, ala namin sa anak lang, yung pala kasama yung apo at yung mga pa, which is very good. And then, kanina, narinig ko yung example ni Kuya. Priority is not success in school, which is like ito sinasabi sa mga anak namin. Pero na-realize ko rin, since last week, at sa ngayon na yung godly heritage itong knowledge about God ang mas mahalaga and then okay lang naman palang mamalo basta out of discipline not out of anger so yun kailangan. sa bagay ako ngayon medyo hindi na namamalo kasi malalaki na rin sila <laughs> Nahirap ng palo eh. Mas patanggat pa sa akin yung anak mong isa. So, good model, uh, sa bagay, pagkailangan mo talagang magturo sa bata, you need to be good model. Minsan, nagkaroon kami ng discussion ng mga bata. Noong time na yung ganit na ganit ako nun. And then, may sinabi sa akin yung anak ko, sabi niya, dapat daw, good role model ako. So, tumalim sa isip ko yun, even though, <coughs> noong time na yun, ganit na ganit ako. Pero, hindi ko siya nasagot ng maayos na sa sinabi niya ngayon. Kasi, siyempre, yun yung time na sumasagot ko pa rin. <laughs> pero, <laughs> pero, pumasok yun sa akin. And then, last week, Last week, last Friday, nagkaroon na rin kami ng discussion. And then sabi ko sa kanya, sa kanila, na in case mangyari ulit yun, kasi nag-uumpisa pa lang ako matuto ngayon, in case na mangyari ulit yun, na magalit ulit ako, mapagalit ako ulit sila, at hindi ako makapag-behave uh, ng maayos kung may sinabi ko sa sinasabihan. Ang sabi ko sa kanila, okay, pag alam ninyo, pagkita ninyo, ganit na ganit ako. Yung time na, pag yung time na yan, 
Huwag niyo sabihin sa akin mga ganyan. Kasi baka hindi ko siya matanggap. The day after, pag okay na ako, saka niyo uli ako kausapin. <laughs> at sabihin niyo yung gusto niyo sabihin. Kasi, siyempre, nag-uumpisa pa lang. Kung baga parang, umpisa pa lang ako maging mature. Na pwede. <laughs> And then, kung mapapractice na namin yun, pwede na nila sabihin on the spot. Sa mga susunod na panahon. Pero sa ngayon, na, nag-aaral pa rin ako eh. Naglalaban pa yung emotional at yung good parenting. Naglalaban pa yan. Minsan na, nauna kasi yung ano eh. Emosyon. So, sinabi ko na lang sa kanila na pag may gusto ko yung sabihin, pag may maganda kayong gusto nang sabihin, huwag ninyong itago or huwag ninyong ikimkimin kahit nagalit na ako. Basta ka nabukasan, sabihin niyo pa rin sa akin. At sa ngayon, isa pang natutunan namin is yung sinabi ni Kuya Mario kanina na ang mga bata is, uh, hindi ko na matanda niyang exact word, pero may tendency talaga sila na pagsin kahit bata pa. Inherently bad. Not inherently, yeah, inherently bad. So, kahit ang mga anak natin ay mababait. Relatively, relatively mababait. Not 100% naman. Pero relatively. Uh, we are so blessed na yung mga anak namin is relatively mababait. Hindi, hindi sakit sa ulo, hindi makukulit na sobra. Pero kahit na sabihin natin mababait, it doesn't mean na hindi na nila kailangan matutunan ang, ang tungkol kay God. So, kasi kahit mabait siya, kung hindi naman nila alam yung faith natin, eh wala din. At the end. That's, a, that's a, again, it, it's worth stressing na uh, how we view our children is very important. Okay? So, let's realize yung sinasabi sa Bible that foolishness is really bound up in the heart of a child. They are predisposed to sin. May inclination sila to sin. Okay, lahat naman tayo, di ba? We're inclined to that. They're no different than us. Kung tayo, hindi <clears throat> tayo perfect, we're inclined to sin. That is a fallen nature natin. The same is true of them. Okay, so it's important that we train them up. We train them up. Sabi nga Nariko, hindi natin dapat i-abdicate yung responsibility natin to train those, to train our children. And the same is true for people in your D group or in your IDG. Okay, don't expect them the, misa may expectation tayo, eh, Christian na siya, so dapat mag-behave siya in a certain way. Meron mong tayong mataas na expectation doon sa tao. And we get disappointed pagka nag-fall siya or nag-make siya ng mistake. Okay? <clears throat> Uh, let's examine yung, yung viewpoint natin, how we view the person. We all hear the brain because of the sin of Adam. We are predisposed to sin. So magsisin tayo eventually. And when that happens, when that happens to our children or to the people whom we are discipling, let's not be disappointed. I mean, we're disappointed, but let's not back away and leave them alone. Kasi minsan ganun ang tendency natin, o oh, sige, magsin ka, bahala ka. Ikaw na mag-isa dyan. Diba? Parang sineseparate natin yung sirili natin sa kanya. That's not the correct reaction. Okay? We should come alongside that person and talk to the person. Okay? Bring them back to the right path. Train them up, especially our children. Train them up to do what is right, to do what is good. Okay? So, thank you so much for tonight. So, let's all just stand up and let's just end in prayer. <clears throat> Father, um, we thank you once more. We commit to you uh, the rest of this night. Thank you for um, the sharing that happened here tonight. Uh, it was just very personal and uh, we, we thank you that uh, we're able to share these things to each other and uh, we're able to teach each other as well based on our own experiences in, and based on our lifestyle. Lord God, how you work in our lives. Thank you so much, Lord God. We commit to you 
um, our ways home. Please protect us. Um, keep us safe, Lord God, and help us to reach our homes uh, uh, safe, Lord God, safely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.